Hello and welcome to the Donahue Group. We're so excited that you could join us. We have a wonderful opportunity this month to speak on two separate occasions with Mayor Juan Perez of the city of uh, Sheboygan. Uh, we have some interesting uh, topics to discuss that relate, of course, to the city, but maybe there's some broader application as well. Joining me along with Mayor Perez today is our part of our usual cast, former state senator Cal Potter and uh, Professor Tom Paneski, math professor at the University of Wisconsin Sheboygan. I always say if I'd had Tom as a professor, I, it would have been a sad day for me not being a, a math whiz. Uh, so in any event, speaking of math, we're gonna be talking about budgeting. And a former alder person, absolutely. So all of us here, one way or another, have been involved in governmental processes, absolutely. and so. We have sympathy for the, for the mayor. And we have a lot of sympathy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Every day and in every way. <laughs> I, went, I, just, I went to the uh, Smithsonian um, uh, exhibit on uh, the presidents, which is just a fabulous exhibit about all of the presidents and their various times and whatever. But one of the buttons that you could get was from Harry Truman, who said, "This is a hell of a job." <laughs> <laughs> so I gave that to all my school board members as I uh, when I was retiring, and uh, so I think you probably I got one too. You I did. <laughs> so you should just start wearing that all the time. Yeah. But in any event, these are interesting and challenging times for the city, and. Uh, what we're going to talk about in this show uh, is, is part of the budgeting process for the city, because that's coming up, on, and I know that you're working on that, uh, and it's a difficult time with limited resources. You've been conducting a number of listening ses sessions around the city in, in uh, uh, voting districts and also at service clubs in various parts, and we've sort of asked you to bring your show, take your show on the road, and, and, but at least talk with us and the, and the audience about some of the issues that, that are facing the city. Um, I've been in, in a couple of those sessions and have found that the charts that you have used uh, to show where our money is coming from and where it's going to be real interesting. So we thought we would just launch off on that discussion and, and see where we go from there. So I think that's great. The citizens' budget process is actually a fulfillment of a promise that I made to the public when I ran for office. And the promise was that I would involve the community in some of the key decisions that are being made in City Hall. And one of those key decisions that, are, that is currently being made is the, cha the budget and the challenges of the budget. So what I did, uh, of course, I worked with you and with Susan Hart and with Dr. Jack Westfall and put together a process, a citizen budget process together that will entail 16 listening sessions, some surveys, and then some evaluations of, of those surveys. The 16 listening sessions have been concluded. Uh, formally 16 listening sessions, two in each district, one in the morning, one in the evening, so everybody had an opportunity to attend. But I've also done, uh, I would say, about six informal listening sessions, and I have yet to make about two, three more. So total will be over 25 listening sessions, not including this one here, that I will have gone out to the community and talked to them about what the budget process is all about, what what t kind of money we're talking about, what kind of expenditures, what kind of budget trends we've seen in the past, what kind of budget trends we can expect in the future. It's all part of that process of getting the citizens educated and involved in our budget. Okay, and um, I'm gonna ask Cal and Tom just to chime in with questions and comments as we go along, but if you don't mind, Mayor, I'd really like just to, I, I just found these charts to be, for me personally, real informative, just to talk a little bit about where our money comes from mm -hmm. uh, and kind of what the state of it is. Well, I'll talk about that, but I, I might add first that <coughs> the citizen budget process, the 16 listening sessions that were held did not cost the city any money. <laughs> the amount of work that went into preparing for it and the amount of work that went into holding the sessions cost the city no taxpayers money. It was done on a voluntary basis. Obviously, I did them at night during the day when I do my job, but it, cost, it didn't cost the taxpayer any money. I think people need to understand that. But when we talk in terms of, of revenue, we need to understand that uh, uh, it's 47% of our, of our budget, of our operating budget, which translates to about a little over $33 million, comes from the state in the, in the form of state revenue sharing. Uh, state revenue sharing has been around for a little bit over 100 years, I believe, and some people are actually questioning sh should that continue or not, um, to the point where now it's no longer called revenue sharing, it's called municipal aid. Mm -hmm. So that sort of sheds a different light into it. Now you take that with the uh, with the state's uh, recent legislation to cap our levy, capped at uh, at 3.339 percent, and our levy actually makes 41 percent of our budget. So 
the state by capping our, our, our levy and by controlling our revenue sharing for the last two years and for the next two years, they in effect control 88% of our budget. So we know that we have no more money to budget, to appropriate for, for whatever the needs are of the community. So we're pretty locked in with our revenue. So the tax levy essentially is what we pay. The, the tax tax levy is the money we get out of people's pockets. Yeah. The, 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 the property That's how I like tax. to put it. We go in your pocket and get the money. I think uh, Professor Paneski is going to use that. Oh. <laughs> but I was going to ask uh, the, your chart here on revenues. Is that uh, for the year 2005? Because you're budgeting for 2006. Six. But this was for the year 2005. Mm -hmm. And uh, okay, so in the last four or five years, has state revenue always been at 47%? Or do you recall if it's been higher or lower? Well, there's, a, there's been a fluctuation in the amount of revenue we get from the state. But for the last two years, it's remained stagnant. And we can expect it not to go up. We're not getting any more, but we're not getting any less in 06 and 07. So what we have to do is as we prepare 06 budget, we almost have to look at preparing 07 budget. At the same time. At okay. the same time. And the rest of the amount, 88% coming from revenue sharing and, uh, and uh, the levy, the rest of the our revenue comes from fines and forfeitures. It comes from, uh, 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 what, is, what is the other one, license and permits, et cetera. So, but the lion's share is 88%. The main share is 88%. Pretty fixed. So <laughs> now that's not the, the we have also have some revenue that comes to us in the form of uh, uh, from the uh, from the cable franchise fees. We get about oh we get about two hundred and ten thousand dollars out of that, I believe, and that's that's under a, a threat of being uh, disallowed. Now there's federal legislation pending that may do away with that. Uh, with the cable franchise fees, which will take away about $210,000 from us. That helps pay for this program. Yes, it does. As a matter of fact, the, uh, the four of us made a, a tearful plea not so long ago, <laughs> urging whoever is listening to, uh, to contact their, yes. their uh, uh, federal and, and legislators. Let me it. It's actually about $410,000. Right. Right. Yeah. right. So it is a substantial chunk of change mm -hmm. for the city to bring programming like this that, hard as it is to believe, probably would not be a commercial success, right. but... Uh, 110000 of that goes to pay for this uh, cable uh, television network, and 300000 generally has been going for capital outlay, uh, primarily squad cars. Mm -hmm. So when, if that is done away with, we'll have to make that difference from somewhere. Sure. We, we're not, not going to have the $300,000 to pay for sure. squad cars. Sure. So that money is going to have to be shifted from somewhere else. So and the money... embarks you into looking at fees and other types of revenue. Mm -hmm because you just don't have any right. alternative, really. We're going to have to look at alternative sources of revenue right. in the form right. of fees, assessments, or taxes, right. uh, which is taboo right now. Everywhere I go, people say, don't you dare tax me anymore. We don't want to be assessed anymore. We don't want any kind of fees uh, attached to any of the services that we're already paying for. So we're, we're locked in as far as what, what kind of money we're getting. If I dare to even speak the word raising taxes or fees or assessments, First thing I would do is do what I'm doing now and go to the public and let them have input as to what they feel about these things. Mm -hmm. All right. And Wisconsin historically has not looked at fees, whereas in many other states it's been a long history of water fees, garbage fees, you name it. Uh, but Wisconsin having revenue sharing to the extent mm -hmm. it has and the high property taxes has sort of institutionalized those two sources as being the bulk of the revenue. Mm -hmm. and so now when you embark upon change, people don't always have the understanding or the empathy that you're locked in with 88 percent of your budget now where do you go exactly mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, let's take a look at where the money is being spent right now it, as as, yeah, as we look at the chart it appears that really the lions or I'm sorry not the lion's share but more than half is for public safety 52 percent actually goes to police and fire protection um, right now I know the chart indicates it's 113 employees it's actually 130 employees that they're there at the time that I got that information, uh, that, that may have reflected a, a previous amount of people that were working for the police department. The fire department, 76, I think there are about 79 right now. But they're adequately funded, in my mind, and adequately staffed, uh, as, as the chart reflects. The other bigger chunk goes to public works. It's 21%, and then 17% for administration, uh, administrative costs. Now, administrative is a tricky word because it actually really should be, per statute, a, a municipal government and that involves a lot of other things beyond administration. We cover costs for the shanties, the senior center, the armory, municipal building, and things of that nature. All right, all right. Uh, public works, does that include the uh, 
uh, wastewater treatment plant? No, the wastewater treatment function is a separate budget. Separate. So revenues from there, from the other communities, are, are all separate. It's a it's separate their own idea. budget, and they appropriate it. To, okay. To Likewise, fund. the water utility. Likewise, the water, water utility. utility. Okay. And, the, and, and the library. The Although the library, library gets, gets a chunk, a chunk of the right. levy, yeah. a third okay. generally. Right, but they have other sources of revenue as right. well. Mm -hmm. Fairly complex, actually. Is, uh, it, it is very complicated. It, uh, for a lot of people, it's hard to understand. That's why I try to keep my charts a little, a little simple and mm -hmm. the discussion a little simple so you can understand it from a business standpoint. Mm -hmm. You've got so much money to work with. You've got so many expenditures. Can, can you balance? And that's, what, that's called a balance in a budget. Mm -hmm. And that's good for me, too. <laughs> so <laughs> what have the trends been? It looks as if... Um, we've charted here um, uh, original budgets for major departments from 1996 uh, to date, mm -hmm. and uh, it appears that the, the growth industry has been uh, the police department, uh, right. as the, well as fire to a, a, a lesser extent. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the interesting thing to note when we look at the trend from 96 to 205 is that traditionally the police department and the fire department have been receiving a little bit more money annually that has been budgeted for. And when we look at original budgets, that's the actual, that's the budget amount that's budgeted, not the actual amount that's spent. I was challenged on that point. I went back and checked actual versus budgeted. The actuals were a little higher. So, but it, it, the, I think the important thing to draw from that chart is that the amount of money that has been appropriated for fire and police, which is public protection and safety, has, has gone increasingly up. But when that happens, one needs to understand that somebody's going to take the hit because if there's only so much money to, to use and you shift some to give to someone else, somebody has a little bit less. And that chart will tell you that Public Works took a hit. Yeah. And they're, they're about 24 people short of their full staff status right now. Okay. All right. You know, if this were a high... Uh, budgeted TV show, we'd have somebody here to switch the charts around, but I'm just, I'm going to do that and hang on and you'll all be happy not to hear me talk but, for just a brief let minute. Let me just look at one chart just so, all right. if you look at the Public Works chart 1996, they're a little under eight million dollars, maybe seven and a half million, and in 2005, seven and a half million, so basically it looks like they're flat across the board. Mm -hmm. And then if you look at the police, so about seven and a half a uh, million in 1996 to over 10 million. So that's uh, what, that's a quarter, about 25% increase in the mm -hmm. police department. So it looks like public work's been flat and the police have grown by about 25%. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I saw, yeah. <laughs> Make it exciting. Where is Vanna White when you need, need her? <laughs> just, just remove completely. So, oh, okay. you guys keep talking. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> You had, you had talked about what, what the history of revenue sharing has been, and that chart that you just flipped over uh, reflects what the, what the history has been for revenue sharing. If you can keep it there. Revenue sharing has been an interesting history because uh, it was Pat Lucy, particularly when he was governor in, in the 1970s, who really felt that shared revenue was something that ought to provide property tax relief, not just be a shared revenue as historically as it began as sort of a percentage of what you paid in. Mm -hmm. It really was sort of a, a gift to communities that were wealthy because they got a lot back. And then when Pat Lucy came in, he saw in the 70s particularly the decline of the inner city. Milwaukee, good example, mm -hmm. white flight, uh, decreasing tax base, and as a result, he tried to change the formula, and he did. And it did, it boded well for communities like Sheboygan, Milwaukee, and elsewhere, who need, depended very heavily on that property tax, and they needed some relief. Mm -hmm. So the formula, has, uh, as instituted by Pat Lucy at that time, has been somewhat under attack over the years, because there are communities that don't get what they think is their fair share in return. But in many cases, they have their own growth and, and, and affluence and they don't need it as much as other communities. So there's always a debate, I guess, between need and what you think you should get back. Well, and, and finding any formula that is truly fair, number one, you have to agree on the values on which the whole system is based, and people don't necessarily agree on that. And number two, then, to figure out a system that's fair, again, requires, I think, a complex decision-making process that's really very tough. But there's that we too can... many variables, and those variables yeah. keep varying. Yeah, exactly. So. Exactly. And, and then the political wins, you know, going back and forth, 
it's, it's hard. The chart up here um, reflects, Mayor, what you had said before about uh, revenue payments remaining pretty, um, uh, actually a fairly dramatic decline. You were on the council when that decline took place uh, and is staying pretty, pretty stable right now. So, and that big drop was when the budget of the state was right. in great deficit, and we always told them by the letters that you know you can talk smart and cut the state budget, but when seventy-five percent of the state budget is local aids, the buck stops somewhere else, and it isn't on the state level; it's on the local level. And that chart just dramatically shows what happens when you cut state revenues in order to balance your budget. But now we're seeing the same thing happen when 47% of our budget is state aid sure. and that goes away. We're in trouble That's right. because then you have to go to other sources of revenue and mm -hmm. primarily the people, the source you go to is people. But the chart reflects in 04 and 05 how it just leveled off and we know for sure it's going to remain at that level for the 06 and 07. So we're not getting any more, but we're not getting any less if that's any good news at all. Yeah, uh, so it's not completely grim. The next charts, I think, really address the, the next one in particular, and I just, I think we're interested in your input on just what the challenges are that are facing what appears to be a, a widening gap, or at least, a, Professor, a stable gap uh, as you review the chart between expenditures and revenues. It's, it's a, at least as I'm looking at it, a fairly grim picture. But what this whole budget, citizen's budget process is about is again is to give the, the, uh, the public an opportunity to provide input and to understand the budget process, but also so that they can give us some idea what it is that they hold more important than other things. Uh, that's prioritizing. Mm -hmm. uh, when the governor came here about a month ago to End Park, he very eloquently and very passionately told us how he prioritized education. But by prioritizing, prioritizing education, he deprioritized something else. And guess what? Somebody took the hit, and that means municipalities. So we have to do that, too. We have to constantly be prioritizing. What is it that we're going to hold more important than something else and put more money in there, or the very little money we already have? But when that happens, as I said earlier, somebody, some department is going to take the hit, and that's just the way it's going to be. What you see here, though, is to me is probably my 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 most important uh, chart because it reflects what, what's happening with our expenditures when they automatically go up every year, but our revenues don't. And when you have that trend going, a spiraling of revenues going up, it creates a huge gap. And the only, the only way to balance is to bring your, your expenditures down or your revenues up. Yeah, you've got a little history, Mayor, uh, 201, 202, 203. I thought the city was kind of to break even, operating expenditures and revenues kind of zero out. They, but it looks like the expenditures uh, before you came on board were always above the revenues all the way through. Even so, there was a gap to start with. The city was spending more that they could, that they took in for the last five years. Mm -hmm. in, in trying to go back and figure out exactly what happened, it's it's not easy. And part of it, I think, is you talked about automatic increases. What's automatic? Well. Steps in longevity, in many instances, salary and wages, we have premium shares, um, we have uh, cost in energy, cost in gasoline, we have over six and a half million dollars in police and fire vehicles. They don't run on water, they run on gas. We're already budgeted right now. We've, 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 we're zeroed out on our budget on gasoline and we're not even done with the year yet. So that's gonna cause a gap. That money will have to be shifted from somewhere else. So we've got automatic everything and people don't care if our revenues don't go up. These expenses keep going up at an incredibly fast rate that our revenues can't keep up with our expenditures. And that's called a budget deficit. And the only way to do that is to bring your revenues up. People don't want to be taxed anymore, assess or feed anymore, so we can't go up. We're not getting more money from the state or the levy, so our expenses have to come down. You cut services, you cut people, you got problems. Plus health care costs. We all your oh, employees have not costs. been... Uh, Less than probably 13 percent a year the last couple of years. At 12 to 13. Yes. Right. Yeah, and and those are good plans, but they're they're terribly expensive. Yeah. There's there's no good. Even bad plans are terribly expensive these days, so it doesn't really make much difference. But um, when you talk in terms of revenue, we know that we don't. The, the only revenue we have is from the state, 88 percent coming from the from uh, 47 from the state, 41 percent from the levy. So people that say, well, why don't you borrow, go borrow money? A lot of times when, the, when a couple gets in trouble and they need more money, mm -hmm. well, they go out and borrow. Well, the city has that ability to borrow also, but we really can't in a way, as, as you can see by the chart that demonstrates what our debt 
uh, looks like it's gone increasingly up to a point where we no longer have a lot of borrowing capacity. And that chart reflects $70 million, which is about 3% uh, or equalized value in 05, and we're allowed to borrow 5% maximum of our equalized value, which is about $120 million. But the council, at some point in time before I became alderman or mayor, capped it. I don't know if you were there, uh, Tom, but they capped yeah. it at 3%, which is smart. And I hope the council never violates at 3% and go, tries to up it. Just for our listeners, equalized value is essentially the value as set by the Department of Revenue for all the property in the city. Correct. And so we can borrow up to 3% uh, of that value. It looks like we're getting there. But we're up there already now. Granted, our equalized value fluctuates up, so we'll have a little room there, and we pay off six million dollars a year. But that's where the police station is going to come in. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be that's going to take up that that amount of money there. And that's why we're trying to work right now with the police station the cost. We cannot afford seventeen million dollar police station. That's all there is to it. Mm -hmm. I promise the people that I, I champion the construction of a police uh, station, and I will continue to do that. But it won't be at seventeen million dollars, and I think everybody understands that. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um. What uh, what does a, a in dollars does one employee represent? Salary plus benefits, or whatever. Do you have any number no, on that? Not Eighty thousand, fifty thousand. It's no, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have that amount. I can go back and find out for you, though. <laughs> right now, we're trying to set up a, a, a computer system where we can retrieve information that will that, that, that that's usable, not just retrieve it for any reason. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of their information just wasn't available. Now, I was interested um, in our discussions about the just the debt service. How much money we pay uh, on the debt. And we are, I think a lot of us are used to talking about that in the national context because, because we know that payments on the national debt constitute, what, 26, 27 percent of the entire budget, if I'm not mistaken, you know, a huge amount of money. Right now, uh, city residents Sorry. are paying a, a fair amount of money for, for debt service as well, are, are they not? Right. I think the, the chart that, that's around here somewhere uh, reflects that of the $1.8 million increase in the levy, um, 20, it'll be about 59% when that police station is built, 59% of that is going to go automatically to pay for debt. So the, and that does not include the fire station or the capital improvements. So when you add those two, 75% will go automatically to pay debt or we default on our loans. So what you're saying, and I just think that this is uh, kind of extraordinary, is that that amount of money out of, and we're just talking the tax levy now, which is that 41% figure. So uh, 74 cents, I think you just said, um, mm -hmm. for each dollar that we pay in our property taxes is going to go for debt relief? Pay debt. That's... It's unconscionable. That's fairly extraordinary. 74 percent. I thought you said 75. 75 percent. If, when, if depending on the on the um, borrowing for the police station, right, right. and oh, we'll be talking about that in our in yeah. our next episode. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Wow. Okay. Coming attractions, you know, just like you get in West Wing, but um, <laughs> but right now uh, the amount is still quite high. Um, uh, Fifty nine cents. Right for now. every dollar? Right now. Right now, yeah. 59 cents. Mm -hmm. And that's a 23 the... for existing debt. Okay. 23 to 25 for existing debt. And then when you add on the police station, the fire station, and the okay. capital improvements program will okay. be up to 75. Okay. So that that's... Uh... It's a little crazy. That's no I think that's what people need to understand. And we're facing some very serious budget times right now. And I need help. I need, I need to be able to turn over a budget to the council that truly reflects the will of the people and the only way I can do it is to get some feedback from the people and that's what I want to do. Mm -hmm. uh, as a, do you think uh, if you, if, oh you're working on the budget right now, yes. are they not? Aren't yes. the committees working on the budget or department are, heads? We just got done with the department head meetings. Uh, I think you recall how, they, how that works. And they have, you have a proposed uh, initial budget uh, at this point? Not yet. Not, Not yet. yet. Okay, so we don't, we don't know where it is at this no. point. Yet. Well, we've still had some issues that are unknown from the state as to how they're going to handle our debt, our existing debt and new debt. So okay. there's formulas being put together on that. Um, not to put down the state, but a lot of times the state takes their time and without regard to what, how it impacts municipalities. And that's just what we have to live with. I understand that. It's okay with me, but we're, we're, we're held back a lot of times. Okay. 
Yeah. Well, I think this whole chart's put forth to the taxpayer that there's going to have to be some cuts made, and that when you do make them, um, you don't have any choice. Correct. And uh, so if you want less uh, taxes, you have to uh, have less services. Mm -hmm. it's basic every, every department is going to come and tell the public and tell us, tell the mayor and tell us we're more important. Police will say we're more important than everybody. Yeah. Fire will tell, we're, tell everybody we're more important than anybody. Public works will do the same. Everybody is going to tell everybody they're more important. question is how do we strike a fair and equitable balance of the appropriations that we have to make so that everybody is okay and then we provide some sort of a balanced uh, service mm -hmm. to the community. Just as we close out, um, what is the schedule? The, the, your office will have the budget to the city council by what time do you expect? Yeah, uh, in, uh, let's see, November, October, second week in November, I believe. The second week in done. November. Mm -hmm. And then the process is a prolonged debate or? Uh, no, actually the process, there's only one budget hearing and that happens during the council floor and then the budget gets voted on. That's why these listening sessions are very important. Okay. The time to talk about the budget is now, not when you get your tax bill yeah. in January. The mail right. in mid-December. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, we'll be talking about uh, the citizens' budget process, the listening sessions, what you've heard and, and what you're going to be bringing to the council in just a, a few minutes or in our next episode. But for now, it's been most interesting. And uh, charts away, here we go. And uh, uh, Glad to be here. And remember what Harry Truman said. <laughs> so thank you.